CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... G. Marshall. No one will dispute that the greatest mystery of all recorded time is that of the lost city Pompeii, which disappeared under layers of lava and volcanic ash 1,900 years ago. The stories of those who lived through the horrors of an erupting, life-destroying volcano have, until this dramatization, not been told. One great book by Edward Bulwer-Lytton has been written of this city of the dead, to which we have added sound and fury and facts unknown to Sir Edward in a series of five mini-dramas of the people of Pompeii, their lives, hopes, dreams, and attempts to survive during those last days. Where am I? What am I doing in the Temple of Isis? You used to come here. Quite often, Oriana. I know. But tonight, I... I feel I'm only half awake. Why can't I remember? Remember the past, Oriana. Did I come here for one of our talks? And fall asleep? And this bitter taste in my mouth. It is strange. <laughs> drama told in five complete parts based on Bulwer-Lytton's classic novel, The Last Days of Pompeii, has been especially adapted for the Mystery Theater by Gerald Keene and stars Russell Horton. I'll be back shortly with Act One. This week on Knott's Landing, Karen's efforts to defend her daughter's school teacher from her neighbor's attacks lead her into a relationship that could destroy her marriage. Starting this afternoon... I'm going to do whatever I can to help beat you. I wonder if you'd say that if you didn't have those curly blue eyes. Michelle Lee stars on Knott's Landing, Thursday night at 10, 9 central, on CBS Television. Suppose I asked you to lunch tomorrow. Ask! I'm Susan Anton. It's a good feeling to sleep the night away on a perfect sleep of Pillow Soft is the ultimate in sleep. Unique extra thick cushioning for heavenly comfort on top. Ultra firm support inside. Perfect sleeper pillow soft. Firmness that feels good. Be a perfect sleeper. Buy a perfect sleeper. Perfect sleeper. Buy a Cigarettes are a breathing hazard. Smokers, please don't add that extra offense. Give us a break for life and breath. any golden rule. They worship many gods, practice many arts, and consider themselves the most civilized and sophisticated beings on earth. And many live in Pompeii on this hot summer day in August when the streets are almost deserted. Well, if, if you ask me, Marcus Rufus, I, I think you're mad. It is 
blazing hot and you insist on remaining in the city over the weekend. My good friend, Diomed, I've told you I've something very important to take care of. Uh, well, you know, we could be sitting on my boat in the bay enjoying whatever is left of a cool breeze this very moment. <laughs> Any weekend but this. Well, why didn't you set sail this morning yourself, alone? Uh, because I thought at the last minute I, I might convince you not to waste your weekend on a fool's errand. Oh, I suppose I am foolish. But I cannot get that woman out of my mind. Uh, Marcus, I'll tell you right now. That woman you say haunts you, she is not for you. The kind of people who go to the temple of Isis, who take seriously what that uh, so-called priest tells them, uh, calls himself an Egyptian holy man. Huh? Demon, that, that chariot is out of control. Uh, well, we'd better move into this doorway. Oh, great Jove, there's a girl crossing the avenue. Doesn't she see it? <laughs> you, look out! Get out of the way, girl! The chariot! Marcus, what are you doing? Uh, hold on to me, girl. Hold fast. Oh. We're going to jump. Oh. Oh. oh, that was a close call. What's wrong with you? Did, didn't you hear me shouting? Oh, you saved my life, sir. I know I did. I almost lost mine. Oh, now, you are supposed to look when you cross the road. Oh, but... Didn't you hear or see anything? Are you deaf, dumb, and blind? No, Your Grace. Only blind. I'm sorry. Oh. No, no, no. It's, it's my turn to apologize. Blind. You must forgive me. Well, usually I have no trouble getting around. Did you see that fool? He kept right on going. But I was confused. I I couldn't tell which street the chariot was coming from. Well, uh, you don't know how lucky you are, young lady. You've got to keep your eyes open. Uh, but dear Ned, this young lady is blind. Oh, it's downright disgraceful the way that... Blind? Did you say blind? Oh, I... Oh, my dear girl, how are you able to walk the streets and find your way? Well, this is the very first accident that has befallen me. Now, are you sure you're all right? I'd be happy to accompany you where you're going. Oh, it's not necessary. I've grown up in Pompeii. There isn't a corner of it. A shop, a road, a marketplace that I don't know, really. Miraculous. If you'll just turn me around and... Head me in the direction of the Temple of Isis. That's all I need. Oh, the Temple of Isis. Isn't that where you're going, Marcus? Um, what takes you there, young lady? Abasis, the high priest. He is most inspiring. Oh, let me take you there. I, I wouldn't want you to have another near accident. Oh, but that wouldn't be possible. Oh, why not? You shouldn't be seen on the same side of the street with me. I am a slave, and free men do not walk with slaves. Indeed. What is your name, slave? Lydia. And who owns you, Lydia? The wine merchant, Calvis. Lydia, let's be on our way. I wouldn't like being late for the sermon. Hey, uh, Marcus Rufus, you're not seriously going to waste an afternoon listening to that rabble rouser. I told you, dear Med, there's someone who goes to that temple I want to meet. If you will excuse me, sir, that high priest has helped many. I pray he can help me. Uh, then what do you think he can do for you, my girl? Give me courage. Oh, the man's a charlatan. The only person he's ever helped is himself. The gold plate in that temple it would stun you. <laughs> Lydia, this is my old and good friend, Diomed. He's a businessman, a merchant. He owns a fleet of ships, and he's a very wise man. Yet even the wise can learn. I am honored, sir. I'd like you, in your own words, to explain to my friend why you believe in this man. Doctors have told me that all my life I shall always be blind. Our basis, the priest, tells me I need not always be a slave. I say to you, throw off your shackles, all pretensions... I leave you with the thought that from Egypt came knowledge of the world, of the stars, the seasons of the earth. There is more to your destiny than to live in the shadow of Vesuvius. Attach yourself to Egypt. Wake up, Pompeii. Sin no more. Go and be merciful.
Well, that uh, <clears throat> didn't go down too badly. Did it, Hepatitis? <laughs> they liked it? Oh, Master, you're wringing wet. You give so much of yourself. Oh, well, uh, there is no other way. It was one of the finest speeches you ever made. That is where you're wrong. That was no speech. I speak by convictions from the heart. The multitude can tell. The slightest note of insincerity shows up right away. That is what distinguishes the ordained from the ordinary. I shall never learn to speak from the heart as you do, Master. Oh, of course you will, Abyssides. I'd say you have all the qualities for spiritual leadership. That is why I selected you as a novitiate. It's a great honor, but I have much to learn. There isn't one of us who couldn't use a little more knowledge. Oh, uh, by the way, I didn't see your charming sister Oriana at the temple today. She's very busy with the work among the women. Master, there's several people lining up to speak to you. Oh, do you recognize any? Yes. Do they look well off? Not, not that I ever refuse the poor, but our ministry cannot proceed without funds. One of them is Diomed, the merchant. Diomed? The Diomed, the ship owner? I believe so. Hmm. Have him step up first. And uh, don't dry me off too well. A man who preaches looks better wet than dry. Yes, I, 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 I came against my will, our bases, but uh, my friend insisted. I am a merchant, not a gambler. But when I do back, it's, it's only on sure things. So uh, only if your spells and incantations can ward off the evil eye will I make you a donation. Well, what do you desire? I have uh, three ships arriving from Capri in two days. Uh, I've been watching the skies, and, and those black clouds over Vesuvius are not to my liking. Uh, now, if you could guarantee my ship safe harbor, I, I'll reward you. Last winter, you lost six ships. This past summer, you lost another three. Uh, 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 how, how, how did you know that? You want a guarantee? I'll give you a guarantee. Leave your sacks of gold in the offering room. Two sacks for each safe journey. <laughs> Done. I'll have my slaves bring them over by nightfall. And beside is, show the citizen out the side door and bring in the next penitent. <laughs> Ah, a young man and a young lady. <laughs> I came today because I was looking for someone. Ah, and the young lady. Yes, your Lydia. We have met, haven't we? Hi, priest. I was very moved by your sermon. Thank you, my dear. Hepatitis, I think we can close the temple doors for the day. Uh, you, the young man, you are Marcus Rufus... And you have come because someone... Yes, yes, you came to see someone. But they're not here. Someone in the audience? That is quite true. Hmm. Leave an offering in the box on your way out. It's a lady you wish to meet. Uh, leave an offering and you will, I say, will meet her today. Ten gold pieces will do it. Good day, Marcus Rufus. Before I go, I should tell you Lydia has no sight. You don't have to tell our bases anything. He knows. How sad. Blind and so beautiful a body. The will of the gods. Has it been always so, Lydia? Yes. I was born without sight. But the richness of your voice makes up for the fact that I cannot see you. Marcus Rufus... You may leave us. Uh, don't forget the offering box. This sweet child and I shall have a quiet little talk. Uh, sit down, my dear. Here. Let me lead you to this couch. That was my introduction to our bases. That very strange Egyptian high priest the most popular of the many cults and beliefs in Pompeii. I had to smile at Diomed, who, although he protested our bases was a fake, just the same, just in case, would send along a couple of bags of gold. Since Pompeii in 79 was so popular, there were those who preyed on its people like vultures. Come here, you. What do you want? Where are you going? Home. 
Is that near here? Is that any of your business? Oh, a brave fellow. What's your name? Apocides. That's funny kind of clothes you're wearing. It's a tunic that a priest wears. Are you a priest in the temple of Jupiter or Mars? Neither. I'm a neophyte in the Egyptian temple of Isis. An Egyptian, then? You must carry gold. I have no gold. Don't lie to me. We are sworn to poverty. Would you mind if I just walked along? I, I, I don't feel like talking anymore. I would mind. I feel like talking. What else do you want to know? Do you think foreigners ought to be allowed in Pompeii? Take you. Jupiter isn't good enough for you. I never said that. Jupiter is not so much against sin, but he is supposed to make you rich. Ah, that's the difference between you and me. You don't care, but I do. I want to be rich. I'm looking for riches every night. I'll hand it across. I have no gold, I told you. We'll have to see then, won't we? Oh, help! Help! <laughs> These hey, murderers! Say one more word and this knife will make it your last. Help! Help! Nothing has changed much in 1900 years, has it? Cutthroats and muggers are still with us. We're standing on a street in Pompeii in the huge shadow of a volcano. The moon is bright and high. Tragedy on a grand scale is a handful of miles away. On this street, a neophyte priest fights for his life. I shall return shortly with Act Two. The word is out. There's an outrageous new thriller just published entitled Out. It's the unbelievable story of two mob kingpins, a two-timing shyster, and a mall named Zaza, all involved in a daring plot to launder billions of mob money through a Swiss bank. The only trouble is the one man with the password to get the money out has vanished. Well, not exactly. His leg is found on the Geneva to Zurich train. For Out and Out Entertainment, read Out by Pierre Ray, a bantam book where paperbacks are sold. This week on Knott's Landing, Karen's efforts to defend her daughter's school teacher from her neighbor's attacks lead her into a relationship that could destroy her marriage. Starting this afternoon, I'm going to do whatever I can to help beat you. I wonder if you'd say that if you didn't have those curly blue eyes. Michelle Lee stars on Knott's Landing, Thursday night at 10, 9 central, on CBS television. Suppose I asked you to lunch tomorrow. Ask. When was the last time you made a bologna sandwich for your child's lunch? Did you know that tested against three other sandwich foods, bologna is the highest in cost per ounce of protein, highest in fats and calories, contains potentially harmful sodium nitrate, and is four times as expensive as the cheapest sandwich, peanut butter, which is more nutritious. That's what you could have learned from Consumer Reports, published by America's leading nonprofit product testing consumer organization. Completely independent, Consumer Reports stands guard over your family and your dollars, the food you eat, the cars you drive, the appliances you use, and the services you depend on. 1,000. Subscribe now. Now to Consumer Reports for this money-saving offer. Eleven monthly issues of our magazine, Consumer Reports, plus the invaluable 1980 Buying Guide issue, plus our 383-page guide to drugs and health, plus the 1981 Buying Guide issue when published, 331-1000. A total value of $25.75, all for just $12. To take advantage of this offer, dial this toll-free number, 800-331-1000. Consumer Reports, 800-331-1000. August the 24th, in the year 79 A.D., that Pompeii was inundated under an avalanche of pumice, lava, and volcanic ash. A historic blessing in catastrophic disguise. For when dug up, there were the taverns of the poor and the villas of the rich, just as if the occupants had stepped out for a moment. Some Pompeians never made it to their doors. Now it is several days before the cataclysm. Marcus Rufus, young and red-headed, continues our story. I had left the Temple of Isis. It was dark. And then... A cry in the night. I ran to the sound. In a moment, I had overpowered the ruffian attacking the young priest. 
I gave the cutthroat over to the magistrates. The young man was bleeding. I thought I recognized him from the Temple of Isis. He lived nearby, he said. So I led him to his house. Horiana. Horiana, it's I. I'm beside you. Oh, I'm beside you. I'd be so worried about you. <gasps> Great Zeus, what happened? Brother, you're covered in blood. This is Marcus Rufus, a citizen. I was attacked in the street and Marcus saved me. Oh, Marcus, I can't thank you enough. This is your sister, Oriana? Yes. Oh, my dear friend. You may be the one struck down in the street tonight, but I am the one struck dumb. I think your brother should lie down and rest. He may need a doctor. I don't think so. I have dressed his wounds, and he is resting. <laughs> you, uh... Take charge right away, don't you? Are you surprised? My brother needs no doctor. Really? When I first saw you, it was outside the temple three days ago. And you were talking to a group of women as if they were men. Better than men. I talk to those women as if they were human beings. Hmm. <laughs> I must go now. I, uh, I was happy to have helped your brother. What a reward. What are you talking about? Two hours ago, I placed ten gold pieces in the offering box at the Temple of Isis. And in exchange, the high priest told me I'd get my wish. And did you? <laughs> Someday I'll tell you. Well, good night. Marcus? Yes? For helping my brother tonight, I thank you. What did you think of that high priest? Our basis? You know him? My question first. Oh, an extraordinary man. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. I believe him to be divine. Mm, that I'm not so sure about, but he does have powers over events and men. And over women. Over you? I don't know you well enough to tell you that. I hope someday you will. Marcus Rufus. Over here. Oh, I've been looking for you, dear Matt. Oh, may I join you? Yeah, yeah, sit, sit, sit. sit. Uh, uh, Calvers, a beaker of wine here. Uh, so you've been looking for me, have you? <laughs> Not very hard. I come to this tavern every day, always have. I mean today in particular I was looking for you. Isn't it today you have three ships due in from Capri? There's a storm coming up, very black clouds over Vesuvius. Yes, I know what the weather is. Where have you been keeping yourself? Yeah, don't bother to make up a story. <laughs> I know. Uh-huh. A gentleman cannot visit a lady in Pompeii without rumors. Is it true that she stands on street corners and uh, tries to organize the women of Pompeii? Well, I've heard, but I do. Uh, tells them they ought to be running things? <laughs> Seems to me women run everything without being told. Oh! Very, very black clouds, did you say? Thick like smoke, as far as the eye can see. I pray my captains can make harbor be before the storm hits the bay. Your ships will be protected. That's what gods are for. Yes, I know that. Put your faith in that Egyptian high priest. His magic worked for me, it'll work for you. Oh, that sanctimonious joker has no magic. Oh, no. He tells me in a few hours I shall meet the woman whose face has been haunting me, and it happens. Uh, it's coincidence. That priest has the power to make events happen? Hey, what do you take me for, a fool? How could he know that some ruffian would attack a, a young man who turns out to be the woman's brother, eh? That's coincidence. I'm not so sure. Oh, where is that bald-headed coward? Oh, you're right. You're, you're right. I, I simply can't sit here. That storm is making me very, very, very nervous. I, I, I'm, I'm going out to the landing. Out there in all this rain? What good will it do you? I thought you gave bags of gold to our bases that day we went to the temple with the blind girl. Well, I said I sent in gold, but of course I didn't. What am I, a fool? I had one of my slaves bring a half a dozen bags of impure bronze. It, it shines like gold, but it, it's much cheaper. So, you don't believe in our bases' powers? No, not for one minute. That priest is a swindle. He 
preys on the fear of superstitious people. Uh, oh, no, no, no. I put my faith in Mercury, the god of commerce. Uh, he's the one I rely on. Dear Med, nine ships lost in two seasons. Well, 29 came in safely. I'm going. You're coming with me, aren't you? It is a long walk, Marcus Rufus, so we'd better start. There'll be time for wine later. We're not late, brother. I don't think so, Oriana. The hour of meeting was sundown. I just happened to hear of it by accident. Oh, I had no idea there were all these underground passages at the Stavian Baths. Oh, Apocytes, I'll never forgive myself if I miss one word said by this holy man. I've never heard a Christian speak before. This Paul is more than an ordinary Christian. He is one of the true disciples of Jesus Christ. He knew him personally. Oh, this is like those Roman catacombs where the Christians gather to pray. A woman was telling me... Shh, shh, shh. Do you hear something? It's an underground world. I go from town to town. Sam, I can hear some talking. To bring his teachings and salvation. If that's the way... Anyone... Oh. I'll hold the candle up so we can find our way. Look how many people are here. The word I can count 50 candles. More. Oh, you should have told me sooner, Epiciades. People all only arrived from Jerusalem today, and we had to keep this meeting secret. You must keep the faith between God and you. We shall all have to stand before God for judgment. Who among you citizens of Pompeii can tell me what the Lord Jesus Christ said about judgment? Raise your candles high in the air so I may see you. Apocytes, let me have your candle. Do I see a candle raised? Yes. I would like to answer. Are you a Christian? No, I am not a Christian. But I have an open mind. And you know the words of the Lord Jesus Christ? I have not read the scriptures, but a Roman woman who knew Mary Magdalene has told me. And they are? As surely as I live, every knee will bend before me, and every tongue will make its confession to God. Ah, judgment day. I will come forward to you, young woman. Why are you here today? To learn, Your Holiness. I have worshipped at many altars. Jupiter, Mars, Greek gods. Even now I seek the truth in the Egyptian temple of Isis here in Pompeii. And this young man here beside you? He is my brother, Apocytes. He is studying the priestcraft of Isis. It matters not to God. Today, I visit this city to teach that Christ died for all men of all faiths. May I ask you, am I doing wrong to join an Egyptian faith? It is for the conscience of each of us to determine how we would worship. Obey the commandments. You must not commit adultery. You must not murder. You must not steal. You must not covet. Summed up. You must love your neighbor as you do yourself. I'm glad we heard the Christian. I wonder what our bases would have said. I don't know. Our bases is such a good man. I feel I would do anything for him. I think of him as a true friend. How can I turn my back on him now when he has given so much meaning to my life? So it's the man you worship, sister, not the religion. I don't know. And it's not any easier since I've met Marcus Rufus. Oriana. Abasis, you startled me. Brother and sister at the baths. Both of you sneaking underground with this handful of heretics to listen to the mockery of this, this crucified Christ. Have you been waiting for us? No, no, I was at the baths. I, I saw this line of pilgrims with their candles and I said to myself... Poor ignorant peasants. But to find you both here. Oriana, 
you, Apisides. A dagger in my heart. This Christianity is only for the ignorant. Why do you say that? It's a sign of intelligence to admit you don't know all the answers. You are breaking away from the faith of Isis. I suspected it now that you have a new friend in Marcus Rufus, eh? another agnostic. So, it's Marcus you object to. One would have told me I'd be up all night and the next morning rowing my head off in a full gale. I would have laughed at him. Uh, the joke's on me, too. I, I'm a ship owner. I haven't rowed since I was a boy. This is hard work. How long do you think it'll take us to get to the Reeves? Uh, well, your guess is better than mine. Standing with you last night on that wharf, watching two of your ships going down with sight of land. Uh, how calmly you took it. Hey, well, what else could I do? <laughs> Life is chances. Yeah, I relied on good weather and my old amulets. There's one chance you took, my friend, which didn't help. <laughs> Only one? Well, yeah, when you made an offering of bags of impure bronze instead of gold. Uh, Who knows? The real thing might have brought you good weather and ships in safe harbor. <laughs> in Pompeii is beginning to unfold for us. By the standards of our century, perhaps it's a primitive existence, yet there is a sophistication of thought and ambition. Whatever their way of life, we cannot forget these men and women of the very first century A.D. laid the building blocks upon which today's civilization stands. I shall return shortly. With Act 3. Do you know how to get the most for your money when you're buying air conditioners, vacuum cleaners, bologna, auto batteries, calculators, washers and dryers, cameras, insulation, house paint, margarine, freezers, tuna fish, insurance, lawnmowers, mopeds, food processors, radios, refrigerators, television sets, stereo systems, and automobiles? Well, these are just a few of the hundreds of products that Consumer Reports tests, rates, and investigates for you. Consumer Reports is published by America's leading non-profit product testing consumer organization. Completely independent. When you read Consumer Reports, you'll know how to get the most out of the dollars you spend. 1,000. Subscribe now to Consumer Reports for this money-saving offer. 11 monthly issues of our magazine, Consumer Reports, plus the invaluable 1980 buying guide issue, plus our 383-page guide to drugs and health, plus the 1981 buying guide issue when published, 331-1000. A total value of twenty-five seventy-five, all for just $12. Just $12. To take advantage of this offer, dial this toll-free number, 800-331-1000. Consumer Reports, 800-331-1000. 1000 WFAA Dallas Fort Worth Where in the world can you meet so many people in a bookstore of course and at Taylor's particularly William Shakespeare Pogo Krishnamurti Alice in Wonderland Julia Child Jimmy Carter St. Thomas Aquinas Stanley Marcus Sigmund Freud Ansel Adams Edgar Casey Socrates Vincent Van Gogh, Ben Green, The Marquis de Sade, Frank Lloyd Wright, Dr. Seuss, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Taylor's, Dallas Complete Bookstore, Preston Center on Northwest Highway. August 24, 79 A.D., the long-sleeping volcano Mount Vesuvius exploded. And by evening of that day, Pompeii, a cosmos of civilization, itself was dead. Buried under layers of volcanic ash and pumice and mud, which became its tomb for centuries. In our story, that Holocaust hasn't happened yet. Men and women are meeting the needs of daily life just as you or I would today. Nothing can make you feel so much like a fool than to be helping someone and have it turn out badly. We hit the reef and sank. The four sailors, Diomed and I, managed to swim to shore, just in time to see the cargo break up on the rocks. A total loss. 
so, Diomed and I went to dry ourselves from the inside out. Where? At the tavern, of course. I hope we never again have an occasion like this to celebrate. I made the decision. I suffered the loss. Maybe some things the gods cannot change? Diomed, if there's any way I can help, you've only to ask. I make an excellent living as an architect and... Ah, uh... uh, my, my dear young redhead. <laughs> if that isn't the most generous thing I've ever heard of. No, 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 no. I'll just have to tighten my toga. Well, I'm doing ten villas in the hills over Capua. Why don't we join forces? Instead of just designing them, I'll build them and you can be my contractor. What do you say? I... I don't know what to say. After this last ship fiasco, I doubt if any bank will give me credit. Mm, they'll give me credit. You do the expedition. Oh, oh, you stupid! Oh, Look what you've done! Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. But the Alfaro was too heavy for me to carry. It slipped out of my hand. Get out of my sight! Oh, oh, Bill oh, Wine and Chase prices! Get, 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 get out of here! I don't need you anymore! Whoa, whoa, Calvus! Who are you shouting at? Oh, that... That dumb, stupid, good-for-nothing slave girl. I take pity on her, open my heart to her. I'll find a place for you in my tavern. Come work for me. And I don't know what she does. Oh, you should see the mess out there. Two broken and four jars, gallons of the finest wine. Buy a handicapped female slave, and you get just what you pay for. I'm a, I might have known. Hey, did, did you say handicapped? Yeah. That silly, stupid slave. Blind. I hadn't expected to find you here, Lydia. Do you remember me? Yes, I do. Marcus Rufus. Uh, is, uh, is this that slave girl you hauled out of the chariot's path? Now, I've asked your master to bring you to our table, Lydia, because he tells me he's most dissatisfied with you. I'm sure he is. It was an accident. How can I run a tavern when, when all the profits are spilled on the floor? Uh, I think your master has a point. Um, do you have any other talents, Lydia? I have taught myself to write. Write? Right. And the girl can't see. And I can sing. I would say your talents are wasted in this tavern. I don't see why the good Calvus would want to keep you here any longer. Oh, but I need the work. My mother and father depend on me. They're old and sick. Uh, do you pay your slave anything, Calvus? Of course not. Who pays a slave? But I, I do permit Lydia's parents to live here as a favor. Oh, that's generous. Uh, they have a room? Or uh, a kind of shed beyond the open-air drinking area. Uh, Lydia, my family can always use another girl in the household. And uncles, so many I can't count them. I think I'll buy you. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> wait, buy, buy Lydia? Who said she's for sale? Oh, I thought you wanted to be rid of her. Who said? At any price. Come now. Well, a girl who knows the way around in the tavern is worth the weight in gold. Uh, no, no, no. I, I couldn't sell her. Yeah, you see, Lydia, isn't it nice to be appreciated? All right. Name your price. I paid six sesterces for her. She's worth twelve now. Shall we say an even twenty? Twenty? Well, the girl can sing. Uh, Calvus, come with me to the magistrate to draw up the legal forms and then to my house for your money. And Lydia, tell your mother and father to get their things together. Plenty of room in my house, and you can live with them. Oh, uh, by the way, I do remember correctly, don't I? You know Pompeii like the back of your hand? Master, with two eyes, I couldn't find my way about better. Do you know the Via del Abadanza? Oh, yes. Now, at the very end is the Villa of the Marble Fawn. I want you to take a message to a lady who lives there. To a lady? A young and beautiful and very stubborn lady. <laughs> to Marcus Rufus, who stands outside the entrance to the Villa of the Marble Fawn with a message from my master. It is I, servant to... I know. Servant to Marcus Rufus. You have a message for me. You are Oriana, mistress of the villa? Surely you can tell by the way I'm dressed. Oh, my poor child. Forgive me. 
I had no idea. Here, let me take your arm. We'll sit over there by the fountain. It's cooler. You do it very well, you know. I should never have guessed that you can't see. Thank you. Has it always been so? Always. Since I was born. What is your name? Lydia. Lydia. How did you and your master meet? I was almost run down by a chariot. He saved me. I, I was on my way to the temple of Isis. The temple where Abbasis preaches? Oh, yes. Do you know him? What a small world our Pompeii is. Let me have the message from Marcus Rufus. <laughs> Rufus may come and see me, and I shall expect him tonight. Before I go, could could you? Uh, what does it look like? This fountain, the marble fawn. It sounds so beautiful. If I can just touch its face and little body, then I will know exactly how it is formed. like you and I to be friends. A free woman can be friends with a slave. And if I had a little sister like you, I would tell her what I know. Show her the beauties of the mind, which very few people know how to see. I shall ask Marcus Rufus that you attend me once a week. We shall study languages, art, history, what could I give in exchange? Can you cook? Oh, yes. My mother taught me. But well, I'd like to learn. That is an art. Is that a fair trade, Lydia? I've never been able to boil an egg. I have never eaten a boiled egg. You will. In my house. <laughs> I am up. What is it? What's the hour? Master, something has happened to Oriana. She has left the villa. I am robed. You may come in. Come in. Now, now, now. Speak calmly, quietly, child. What is the hour? Three. Before the cock crows. Why are you about this time of night? Your parents will be worried. Well, I have seen them. They told me to see you right away. I'm listening. This is the day of the week I have my history lesson with Oriana. I mean, last night was... It takes place after the evening meal. Yes, yes. Well, last night, someone came to the door. Oriana said I should wait. I heard voices in the garden. A man's voice. It seemed familiar, but I'm not sure. I did hear Oriana say, No, no, I cannot go with you this evening. And then she cried out. I ran to the atrium. I could hear she was struggling with a man. And, and then I must have tripped and, and fallen and hit my head. And when I woke up, the villa was deserted. I, I looked everywhere. Oriana was gone. You didn't recognize the man? No, it, it was dark. But I did find this. Here. Hmm. An ivory comb. It, it's not a woman's comb. It is marked with the seal of the Egyptian god, Isis. Oh, where... Where am I? Abasis. You. Oh. How came I here? Of your own free will. I am in the temple of Isis. But why? What am I doing here? You used to come here quite often, Oriana. I know. But why tonight? Uh, some, something eludes me. I, I feel as if I'm half awake. As if there, there is something missing. I'm not quite all me. I have felt that way for quite some time, Oriana. Why can't I remember? Did I come here for one of our talks? And fall asleep. I feel like I'm chained. But there are no chains. And this bitter taste in my mouth. Oriana, 
I want you to listen carefully. Death is not far away. All those of Pompeii, they slumber. Today, this city is a bright jewel in the empire. But so once were the cities of my own country, Egypt. And what are they today? But ruins along the Nile, the palaces, the shrines are but tombs. Oriana, speak with my tongue. I command you. The serpent coils in the grass on an Egyptian street. The lizard basks in the great hall of a pharaoh. And who has robbed Egypt, Oriana? Rome. Rome has robbed Egypt, clothed itself with the spoils. And what is in the future? Speak with my voice. Egypt will be avenged. Yes, Oriana. Those of Pompeii, of Naples, of Herculaneum, of Rome, who have sown the wind with conquest, shall reap the harvest in the whirlwind of desolation. If you do not open these doors and release her this instant, I shall call upon all the peace magistrates of Pompeii. Marcus Rufus, you will never be able to enter this sacred place. The doors are too thick and too heavily bolted. You may call all the magistrates you wish, but these holy doors will never open. What is that? Close your eyes, Oriana. It is the thunder from the Nile. No. No. Oh. What am I doing here? Oriana! Are you in the inner temple? Marcus! Marcus, is that you? Stand away from the bronze doors, Oriana! The ground is shaking the temple! Oriana! Stand back! The doors are falling! Oriana! Oriana! Hold, hold on to my hand! Marcus! So much dust and sand! We must find a way out! What is happening? It's an earthquake. We've got to run for it. Escape somehow! History records that Pompeii suffered a severe earthquake. But it was not the quake that destroyed it. That is to come later. In this episode, the first day, we have met many citizens of Pompeii, some free, some slave. We have lived their lives, shared their food, followed their problems. Theirs was an extraordinary mixture of high cultures and the basest of superstitions. More when I return shortly. I'm not the handiest person in the world. But nowadays, do-it-yourself home repair is almost a necessity. Admittedly, some of my work is not perfect, but it gets by. Like many people, I try painting, woodworking, and even masonry. But I never dabble with electricity, because it can be dangerous and not forgiving of carelessness. Yes, Americans are learning how to do more with their hands, and hopefully are not forgetting some of the old rules, like never mixing water and electricity, and reading all power tool instruction booklets before use. And let's not forget about the rule to check for damaged electrical cords either. And remember the one to always dress appropriately. Wear closed-toed, sturdy shoes and safety glasses. And finally, never leave power tools unattended. And keep children away from the work area. A public service announcement from Underwriters Laboratories in this station. intrigues and fascinates me, aside from the pure accident of time, that it should be 1,900 years ago on August 24th at 10 a.m. on a Roman hourglass. Aside from that, how like our own friends and neighbors are these Pompeians? Whether it be bartender or ship owner, the woman who accepts or the woman who rebels. Join us again when we continue this saga where we left it. The second day of those very last days of Pompeii. Cast included Russell Horton, E.V. Juster, Christopher Tabori, and Earl Hammond. 
The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now a preview of the second day in our special series, The Last Days of Pompeii. Thrown to the Lions. May everyone in this atrium, at this table, raise their cups to their lips. To love and success. And may Apollo watch over us. Lovely speech. Very nice. <coughs> oh. uh, of houses to build houses. Ship. <coughs> Ship. Oh. Marcus. Uh, Marcus, what is it? What do you say? It, it's too warm for me here. I must go. Uh, Marcus, why are you getting up? Uh, he looks very pale. Perhaps I should go with him. There is fire in my veins. Stay away from me! Don't try to stop me, anyone. I have my dagger. Stay away! It's tearing at my brain. So many colors, blinding colors! And the side is, come with me. Something has affected his mind. I fear for his life. Uh, will you excuse us? I must go help the poor man. He has suddenly gone mad. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time...